Praise God. Amen. It's time to begin our service this morning. Amen. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I came to increase my faith. I came to put my trust in Jesus. How about you today? Yes. Amen. Let's stand go before the Lord in prayer. Let's invite His presence into this service this morning. Come on, let's choose faith over fear today as we open our hearts to Almighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today asking your blessing, Lord. We ask you to minister, Lord, to every heart and every need, Lord. Father, we welcome you into this church, God. Bless, Lord, with your presence today. And, Lord, may your love be shed abroad in every heart, God, we pray right now. Lord, open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon your church. God, we need your touch. We need your healing, God. We need your grace, oh God. And we come to you today, Father, asking you to meet every need. Loving Lord, hear the cries of your people today. Minister, Lord, to everyone. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all of the glory that you are worthy of today, Jesus. Be glorified, we pray. Accomplish your perfect will, Lord. Meet the needs in every single heart, in every life, we pray. In the wonderful and the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn and tell someone it's good to be in God's house. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's turn to page 453. 453. And we'll sing that song, He Keeps Me Singing. He Keeps Me Singing. Hallelujah. Amen. If there's a time we need to keep singing, it's today. Amen. It's today. Page 453.
Jesus, the name of Jesus has power. Oh, it's the sweetest name we know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord. And there is power in your name today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Page 255, 255. I'll fly away. I'll fly away.
to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Isn't it wonderful that we have someone that we can cast all our cares upon? Amen. All our cares. We don't have to carry the anxiety. We don't have to carry the worry, the, 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 the fears. We don't have to let those things grip us. As the Bible says, fear hath torment. Mm -hmm. But we know when we have that perfect love and perfect love towards Him, yes. He casts out all the fear. Amen. 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 And just put your trust in Him and knowing that He's going to meet each and every one of our needs. Amen. Yes, praise God. Praise the Lord. Again, thankful for everyone that is here this morning that made it to the house of the Lord. Jesus. And those that are going to follow through in our in our videos, we, we reach out to you as well. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Amen. Something different, but praise the Lord. Yes. As, as I said, some, the physical churches may be closing due to whatever regulations and mandates they put out there. Mm -hmm. But the church of Jesus Christ is still going on. Amen. Amen. All right. The body of Christ, the believers, Amen. we're still gathering together. We're Amen. still worshiping Him. We're still looking to Him. That's right. Amen. And putting our trust in Him. Amen. Yes. The church of God still goes on. Praise the right. Lord. Amen. The Bible says that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. And definitely no Amen. coronavirus. Amen. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. But again, we're thankful for everyone that has joined us this morning. Just let God have His way. As far as we know, we'll have there's to have this uh, service this evening at 6:30. And then Pastor Parr announces that there's any changes during the week. Um, but we just thank you for joining us this morning. At this time, our usher will come and receive our Sunday morning offering and tithe. And know that all Christians faithfully pay their tithe and give in the offering. Amen. Amen. Just be mindful if you're not able to make it in the house of the Lord or you're watching this video online, we do have the opportunity to give in the offering and pay your tithes online at our website, which is myntcc.org slash Columbus OH. Amen? Amen. If you can join us there and, and also pay your tithe there, that would be appreciated. Amen. It'll still have to be paid. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. We're putting our trust in Him. Brother Darren, will you pray for the offering this morning, please? Pray, Lord, bless your service in this day, dear Lord. Bless the gift that is about to be received for your kingdom, dear Lord. And bless the gift and the giver. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
God's mercy and God's blessing this morning. I'm glad that you are here with us in the house of God under these unusual and very different circumstances that we're facing in the land today. Amen. Yes. Wow. Amen. Very unusual and different. There's not a, there's kind of a, a hard way to describe it, mm -hmm. but I think that about sums it up. Unusual mm -hmm. and challenging. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. But you know, God's still the same today. Amen. He's still the same forever. yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Amen. And He doesn't change. And His Word hasn't changed. His power hasn't changed. He's still our present help in the time of need. Amen. 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 So we, we we're grateful. And our faith, is in, our faith and hope is in Jesus today. Amen. 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 And we, do our, we are praying and just taking it day by day. Uh, just stay tuned, stay in touch regarding any announcements for the remainder of the week. It seems every day the governor's shutting something else down. Uh, some think it's just a matter of a couple days and the whole city might be on lockdown. I don't know what's coming next. Mm -hmm. We don't know, but God knows. Amen. Amen. While we have today, we're going to worship. Amen. Amen. While we have today, we're going to get closer to God. Amen. Amen. We don't know if the Lord may return tomorrow. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I don't want him to come and find me afraid. Amen. Amen. <laughs> don't let him come and find people afraid and scared and worried. No. Mm -hmm. Let him come find faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Let him come and find people that are ready, people that are believing, people that are trusting, people that know that no matter what comes my way, yeah. I've got a God who's yes. protecting me and helping me. Amen. Amen. And, and we believe that. We yes. believe that. And so just uh, use your judgment. Continue to be wise. And we are doing all that we can do uh, to keep things clean and keep things disinfected. And, you know, we're not just um, foolishly going on, you know, just in some... Uh, radical faith to an extreme where we're throwing caution to the wind. We don't believe that. We believe there ought to be a balance on everything that we do. Amen. Amen. There ought to be a balance. Amen. And so we're wiping things down. We're disinfecting things and we're not shaking hands and we're bumping elbows and we're doing what we can to keep, keep things at bay. But having said and done all of that, uh, we still need God. Amen. Amen. So without God protecting us, without God's help, um, it's in vain. Amen. Amen. It's in vain. So we praise the Lord. Uh, we welcome you. We're going to get into the Word of God today. And we're glad and grateful for everyone that has come today. And again, didn't know what to expect. And we've had several calls. People just more comfortable staying home. Uh, we understand that. We respect that. And for those that are watching online, uh, don't be afraid to shout in your living room. Amen. <laughs> All right. And so we're going to, we're recording the service. And we're going to also attempt to do a live portion here in just a minute uh, when I preach. Um, and either way, as soon as we get to the altar call and prayer, we will be stopping the video. And so anyone that's coming up to prayer, don't be, don't worry. Don't, I don't want you to think, uh, be conscious of that. When, when the altar call comes, we're going to be shutting off the video so we can pray and reach out to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so and we encourage the same for anyone that is watching, listening, whatever, just because... We may not be in the house of God does not mean that uh, we should stop praying or get lazy. Amen. And I think that's the danger in all of this. That, you know, the devil is already fighting people and keeping people from God's house. He's already fighting people and keeping people from prayer and Bible reading and spirituality. And uh, I believe this is a, is a danger in having our schedules so interrupted the way that they have been. To where people are confined to their home, looking at the TVs and electronics now more than ever before. We need to really be careful that we are using that time wisely. That we use it wisely, we use it in a positive way, and remain disciplined, uh, and remain spiritual. Amen? Remain yeah. spiritual. Most of all, remain spiritual. And so, uh, well, let's go to the Gospel of John today. The Gospel of John... 
Gospel of John, chapter. Whoops, you need a finger. Oh, you need a fingerprint for that, don't you? All right. We'll just bring it here and we'll just do it. Gospel of John, today, chapter 10. Gospel of John chapter 10, reading today beginning in verse 7. Verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, and all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. 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 Reading again verse 9 for a text. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out mm -hmm. and find pasture. Amen. And find pasture. Amen. It's not pastor, <laughs> but pasture. A place of provision. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we're preaching today with the help of the Lord, continuing on the fourth part of the great I Am's. Jesus speaking here, I am the door. Hmm. We're preaching today about the door. Let us pray and ask God's blessing this morning as we look to the Lord for His grace today. Sister Justina, will you pray today, please? Thank you. And so our Heavenly Hallelujah. Father, Jesus, we bless you, O God, we thank you. Jesus. We honor you, O God, we exalt you, O God. You are bigger than the world, you are bigger than the circumstances. Yes, Father. God, you are bigger, O oh God, oh, yes. than everything. Amen. This is why we are here, O oh God, oh, yes. to seek your face, yes. to honor you. Amen. Father God, we bless you oh, that you were able to keep us, mm. and you are able to keep us yeah. for days and years and forever to come, O oh God. Amen. This morning, we present your servant to you. Mm -hmm. We present the word to you. Mm -hmm. As you have brought us together through this setting, through the media, through whatever way the world will go out today. Oh, Lord, Jesus. we pray that you reach out to yes. the hearts of your people. Amen. We pray that you comfort us, O oh God. Oh, we pray that you instruct yes. us, O oh God. Yes. We pray that you give us the faith to look to you, oh, Jesus. Lord. We yes. pray that you strengthen us, O oh God, yes. in these times yes. that we, we fix our eyes yes. to the hills from whence come at our help. Yes. Amen. Oh, thank you for the servant of God. Who breath the storm to come and to still deliver your word today. Yeah. Lord, we pray, Jesus, that you will strengthen him. You will indulge him, oh God, with wisdom from above. Mm. That your word will come to encourage. Your word will come to instruct. Yes. Your word will come to lead your people through this troubling time. Oh, Lord. Lord, we thank Hallelujah. you for everyone that is looking up to you today. Hallelujah. Those that are home, those that are at their job places, those that are here, oh God, we are looking up to you, oh God. We say, Lord, strengthen us and encourage us, oh God. Yes. Thank you for this time of worship. And may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Preaching today, I am the door. The words of Christ from John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Things have definitely changed over the past week. And I believe things will continue to change as the days and weeks progress. But through it all, remember God is faithful. Amen. His faithfulness never changes. Amen. And as we look to the subject today about the door, using 
the passage here in John chapter 10, Jesus making another statement about who He is in the lives of those that would put their trust in Him. We started several weeks ago about the great I Am. We began talking about Jesus' statement that He is the bread of life. and talked about how that Christ is that true manna from heaven come down from God to provide for our spiritual nourishment so that we would not be hungry anymore. We talked about the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. We truly need more light now than we ever did. Amen? Amen. Last week we spoke about the true vine where Jesus said, I am the true vine. If you abide in me, he said, we shall bring forth much fruit. And today we're talking about Jesus' statement saying, I am the door. I am the door. Before we get into that part, I want to tell you a little story about a pastor that went out one Saturday to visit his church members. And he went to a house. It was obvious that the person was home. But when the pastor knocked at the door, nobody came to the door. After knocking several times, he knew someone was in there. Finally, the preacher took out his card and he wrote Revelation 3.20 on the back of the card and he stuck it in the door. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and, and dine with him and he with me. He went on his way, not really knowing what was going on in the house. Next morning, he had worship service. And after the service, that same card the pastor put on the door showed up in the offering plate. And below the preacher's message was written the following notation. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. <laughs> Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. <laughs> I've always liked that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but today we don't have to be afraid. Amen? Amen. We don't have to be afraid. No. <laughs> because the one that knocks at our door today, his name is Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And he indeed wants to sup with us, and he wants us to find comfort in him, hope in him, and help in him this morning. Yeah. And so as we think about Jesus' statement here, I am the door, we want to consider here for a moment what a door is. When you think of it in terms of definition, a door really is an access point. The door is an entryway. Mm -hmm. It is a place through which we gain passage from one point to another. And as Jesus begins to tell us here that I am the door of the sheep, He was letting us know that He is that entryway or that passageway so that the people that put their trust and faith in Him may gain access into Him, His family, His love, His grace, and everything else that God had come to provide for mankind. It is Jesus today that is the door of the sheep. And He gives us this illustration of a sheepfold in John chapter 10. We understand that there is first of all a sheepfold. Jesus is teaching here. and He wants us to know that the church really is, this, is a type of sheepfold or a place where all of God's children abide and are safe. You think about a sheepfold in the natural, it is a place, it is a structure, it is a place of refuge where the sheep find uh, help, refuge from the storms, peace and shelter in the time of turmoil. They find rest and a place of protection under not only the shelter of the sheepfold, but under the watchful eye of the good shepherd that stands protecting and guarding them every moment of every day. I'm glad today that God never sleeps and He never slumbers. Amen? Amen. He never sleeps and never slumbers. And here we find the sheepfold given as a picture and an illustration of Christ being the entryway to that sheepfold or that place of protection and that place of refuge. Today not everyone is part of that sheepfold. Not everyone has that refuge or has that peace that we enjoy being in Jesus Christ today. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53, verse 6, that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. 
When mankind sinned in the Garden of Eden, all humanity went astray from the true shepherd. Hallelujah. It is Jesus today, and by His sacrifice, and by His powerful resurrection, that a way has been made that we can be brought back into the fold of Almighty God. Amen. As prophet said, all like sheep have gone astray, turning into their own way and their own, their own sins. But it's Jesus today that received the burden and the sins of mankind upon Himself that all men and women might be brought back to the sheepfold under the loving care of the Good Shepherd today, who is still Jesus Christ, the Lord of all. Amen. And today Jesus was letting us know here that if you want to be part of the sheepfold, you've got to come through the door. Yeah. You've got to come through this entryway. Yeah. And Jesus said, I am that entryway. Yeah. If there ever was a time to be part of the fold and be, and be around the flock of God, I believe it is now. If there ever was a time to, amen, join the sheepfold. And today, if you're not part of the sheepfold, if you're not part of the family of God, or if you're still in the category, like Isaiah said, astray and gone away from God, gone away from His Word, gone away from His commandments, uh, there's hope today because Jesus is the door. Amen. And you know what? That door's still open today. Amen. amen. You may be closing a lot of doors in around Columbus, Ohio, but there's still a door that is not closed. Amen. And it will be closed. Amen. And it's Jesus today. Amen. Amen. That door will never close. Yes. Amen. His door is open today that we may find refuge in the time of need. Amen. You see, this fold is a place of refuge for the sheep because sheep, sheep need some things today. Yeah. When you look at sheep uh, uh, in a, just a practical perspective, sheep, uh, they need priority. They need provision and they need protection. Amen. Of all the animals in the animal kingdom, this is, uh, I probably would say, the sheep are probably the ones that got the short end of the stick. They don't have fangs and claws to protect themselves. Uh, they are basically defenseless mm -hmm. unless there's someone to watch over them and protect them. Yes. They are even, uh, e they easily are deceived and they are easily uh, led astray. And they get lost easily without a shepherd, without someone to lead and guide them. And isn't it, isn't it just so practical and so uh, fitting that we as people would be likened unto sheep? And how that God through the prophecies and through history would liken people, mankind, unto sheep. How that mankind easily went astray in the very beginning and was easily deceived by someone that was not the good shepherd. And they were led, led astray, as Jesus would say, by a thief and a robber. Hallelujah. Because that's why Jesus said, uh, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have what? Life. And that you may have that life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. Even though we're deceived. And even though we as sheep have gone astray. God in His love and God in His mercy has made a way that we can be brought back to Him. No matter what we've done or where we've been today. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, we need our priorities to be, to be uh, uh, guided or to be uh, led by our Lord and Savior today. Our priorities today, amen, need to be put in order. A friend showed me a picture of another state in which he lived. He showed me a picture of these people lined up outside of a store. And you know that lines have been crazy, stores have been crazy, people have been going wild in the world. But this particular one really got me stirred up because it wasn't just a grocery store. They weren't lined up for toilet paper, as we all are. <laughs> they weren't lined up for water and all kinds of necessities. He showed me a picture of a sidewalk lining up with people going to the liquor store. Wow. Going to the liquor store. And I replied to my friend, I said, priorities. Mm -hmm. The priorities of people. It's amazing when you see the, the, the lack and the confusion of the priorities in the world in which we live today. Amen. Amen. People's priorities are all mixed up and they're all turned around. And it's such a time as this as people should be getting close to God. Amen. They should be drawing near to the Lord. Amen. Not near to a bottle, not near to that spirit, but near to the Holy Spirit today. Amen. If there's any spirit we need, it's the Amen. spirit of a living God today Amen. to fill us and to guide us and give us real power today. Amen. We need our priorities to be right before God. Priorities on the Lord. 
And even though, like I said, we're challenged in these times to maybe be able, not be able to go to church and do all the things we want to do right now, we can still open the Bible. We can still get on our knees and pray. We can still lift our hands to heaven and say, oh God, I love you. Oh God, I still believe in you. Hallelujah. Like the song that was on my mind this morning, uh, because of who you are, I give you glory. Uh, you're still Jehovah Jireh. You're still Jehovah Shalom. You're still Jehovah Nisi. Uh, you're still the Lord that provides. Uh, no, my eyes are not going to be on the world, but I want my eyes to always remain on the Good Shepherd Jesus today. Hallelujah. We need our priorities to be on Him. Not only priority, but provision. Sheep don't grow their own food. Mm -mm. They rely upon the shepherd to lead them and guide them to it. Right. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 24, Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. Mm. They neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. Mm. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Jesus asked the question. I, how many agree with me? We're better than the fowls. Amen? <laughs> We're better than the birds. Right? We're God's greatest creation today. And Jesus used a simple analogy of nature to look at these ravens, look at these birds, look at the lilies of the valley, look at my creation, how that they, they toil and they spin not, yet they survive each and every day. God causes the sun to rise and it sets and they're provided for. Even the birds, uh, they just wake up singing. They wake up believing. They wake up going on their way, knowing that no matter what happens, uh, their need is going to be provided for. I believe Jesus was saying, uh, you're so much more valuable than even the ravens. Uh, you you don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to uh, 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 get to the place to where you're you're toiling and spinning and you're you're just uh, 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 just raked with anxiety and fear. Listen, God created you as His greatest creation. If He provides for the birds, He'll provide for His children. Amen. If He provides for the plant life and animal life in the world in which we live, He'll provide for you and I Amen. because we're much better than they are today. Yes. Much more today. So much more valuable that Jesus gave his life for you and I. He didn't give his life for us so that we would perish and die and lack and go astray in fear. He gave his life that we might have someone to trust in and believe in and find hope in. Amen. She need provision and that provision is provided for by the door, by the shepherd here today. He said we also need protection. So many sheep are scared too easily this morning. And all of this we find in the sheepfold, in the family of God. Jesus made the statement here. He made the statement here. He said in, in verse 4 and 5, He said, For they know His voice, and a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from Him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Think about this today. As sheep, as people of God, what voice are we listening to? And what voices are we going to listen to? It matters today the voice that we listen to. It matters today the influence that we allow in our hearts and our minds, especially now. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and another they will not hear. We need the right source of information and inspiration on a daily basis. You see, God's voice today is a voice that will lead it's a voice that will guide. It's a voice that will help and correct even. Adam in the very beginning knew the voice of God. And when he heard the voice of God in the garden, he truly was afraid. And he hid himself because he knew that voice. He knew that voice. And he was afraid because he had listened to the voice of the serpent and listened to the voice of deceit. And so he ran not knowing what to do. But today, brothers and sisters, there's a voice that's still speaking loud and clear. Amen. God's still speaking loud and clear today. Amen. He's still speaking through the storm. He's still speaking through all the confusion. Yeah. He's still speaking through all of the, all the fear and all of the naysaying and all of the wondering in the world. He's still speaking today. Amen. Listen to what David said about the voice of the Lord in Psalm 29. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. 
The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forest. And in His temple doth everyone speak of His glory. Amen. The voice of the Lord today, amen, is a voice that speaks to us. A voice that speaks to us and says, Fear not, I will help thee. Yeah. As he told Isaiah in chapter 41, I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, yes. saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Amen. It's the voice that spoke to Joel in chapter 2 that said, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, yes. for the Lord will do great things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the voice that appeared unto the prophet as he was in the cave, and the wind began to blow, and the earthquake came. But the Bible says the Lord was not in the wind, and he was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, earthquake was a fire, and the Lord was not in the fire. But after the fire, a still small voice began to speak to the prophet. And it's that still small voice that stilled, amen, the fears of the prophet and said, it's all right. It's just me. Amen. Hallelujah. And if we will just allow ourselves today to stop and listen to the still small voice of Jesus, amen, in the midst of the fires and in the midst of the earthquakes, in the midst of the floods even in Columbus and around Ohio this week, in the midst of all these things, we need to stop, stand still, and see the the salvation of the Lord and we can do that by looking to the door and putting our trust in the one who will speak to us who will say fear not who will say it is I be not afraid today it's his voice today we need to hear listen to what Jesus said about the sheep he said another voice they will not hear the question today that I want to pose to you is what voice are you listening to yeah. Whose voice are you listening to? <laughs> Amen. Whose Amen. voice is, is the, the voice that leads you and guides you and encourages you and builds you up or it inspires you, whether good or bad? It matters today what voice we listen to. Mm -hmm. Amen. I was speaking to Sister before service. That, you know, if, you, if you only are listening to the voices of media and the voices of the news and the voices of all the things that are going on, you, of all men, you will be most miserable. <laughs> it will drive you crazy. Yes. Trying to keep up with everything that's going on. I believe we should be informed. I believe we should pay attention to what's going on. But I believe you turn it on, get your update, turn it off, and, and then go on your way believing God's got it all in control. Amen. 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 Yes. Don't dwell on it too long. Don't let it consume you. Yes. Amen. Don't let it consume you. That's yes. what's happening a lot. People are consuming things. Yes. Consuming things. Uh -huh. And it's bad for our diet as spiritual Christians. Amen? As, Amen. as people of God, it's bad for our diet if we're only consuming fear oh, yes. and, and just unbelief and all the things that are going on. Right. Thank God there's a, there's a voice today that is still speaking. Yes. A voice that still speaks. Listen to His voice today. Jesus said another they will not hear. Why? Because there are other voices. Yeah. And those voices, their whole purpose is to steal, kill, and to destroy. Yes. The purpose of the enemy is to steal, kill, and destroy today. That's his only purpose. And he'll do it with voices. He'll do it with lies. He'll do it with fears. He'll do it with bad news. He'll do it with reports and mm -hmm. false reports and things that will try to get us all worked up in our heart and our mind. But even through all of that, we need to stop and listen. Is that really the voice of God speaking to me? Yeah. When you stop and listen, is it really God's voice telling me to be afraid? Is it really God's voice telling me it's not going to work out? Is it really God's voice telling me that, uh, oh no, uh, I'm going to catch it next, and uh, what am I going to do, and, and now my job has put, laid me off, and I've got no money, and, and I don't know what I'm going to do, and, and yes, we know these things are real. We know it's real. Amen? The struggle is real. Now, <laughs> the struggle is real, folks. Now it's real, right? <laughs> now it's real, yes. Things are closing down. Doors are shutting. 
Money's going down and all these things that are happening. But you know, this is going to pass over. Yes. It's going to pass over. Our nation, our country's been through things like this before. And we've rebounded and we've got back even stronger and even better in the long run. Hallelujah. That's the thing about the child of God. When you believe in God and you look at the circumstance and not allow it to be a stumbling block, but let it be a stepping stone, you will be better for it. You will be closer to God. God for it. And you can count it all joy, just like James said, when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of our faith, it works patience. It's bringing out something good. No, it doesn't feel good, but we know that God is in control. And on the other side of the cross, there's a glory. There's a blessing. There's something that God's doing. Amen. We need to keep our hope and trust in Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. The door today is open. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the door. And by me, if any man enter in, if any man enter in, I'm glad today the door is open to anybody. Amen? Amen. The door is open to anybody. Amen. Whosoever will, the Bible says, let him come. Amen. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter our race. Amen. It doesn't matter our creed. It doesn't matter where we've come from. He said, if any man enter in, Jesus would make the statement in another place how that he said he's got sheep that are not part of this fold mm -hmm. that will become part of the sheepfold speaking of the Gentile people mm -hmm. that would one day put their trust in Christ mm -hmm. and how that there would be one fold. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus said there's only one fold. Amen. Right. There's only one fold, one church, one body of believers yeah. uh, made up of many parts and many people from many different places. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We serve a God of love. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We serve a God of grace. We serve yeah. a God that doesn't look at the, 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 the color of our skin, but the content of our heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he looks beyond all the things that people are looking at. Uh, yeah. And he loves us just the same today. Yeah. And he's saying, you, and you, and you, no matter who you are, yeah. you can come to me. I'm a door. And if any man come to me, yeah. if any man come to me, he said, well, preacher, you don't know what I've done. Jesus said, if any man come to me, Amen. he said, well, preacher, you don't understand. I've been through so much. I've been hurt. I've been used. I've been abused. And I just don't trust anybody anymore. Jesus said, if any man come to me. Amen. If any man will just come to Christ, the door, yes. the door is open this morning. Yes, amen. If any will come unto me, come to me and enter in. He said, he shall be saved. Yeah, he shall be saved. There's no salvation in any other today than in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. This door is still open. There is no other door today that leads to salvation, healing, and eternal life. There are many doors today that have been closed. There are doors of opportunity that people look to. There are doors that people look to as an entryway, a place to gain access from one place to another. People even trust in relationships as a door. People trust in their riches as a door, as an entryway. How many times do people do this in the world? If I can just get this job, I will be happy. They yeah. use it as an entryway to happiness and contentment. If I can just get that man. If I can just get that woman. <laughs> better be careful. <laughs> and they use it as a door. Yeah. As an entryway. Because they believe that's how they enter into fulfillment and satisfaction. Yeah. If I could just get that job, that career, whatever it might be. Are you with me today? How many people look to things as doors, as ports of entry, as a means by which they may find happiness and contentment and joy? And many times they go in, they go into the door, they find out, guess what? It's not there. The joy isn't there, the happiness isn't there, the fulfillment isn't there. Why? Because there's only one door today. Yeah. And that's Jesus Christ. He said, I am the door. Yes. I am the way to salvation. I'm the way to the sheepfold. I'm the way. And, and there's no other way to get inside this place of refuge, this place of contentment, this place today of peace. Thank God there's a peace today that passes all understanding. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. 
He's still the Prince of Peace. While doors around us may be closing, there's a door that's never closed. And his name is Jesus today. Amen. And you can even shut the door of the church. If they put that out and mission essential only, guess what? The church is essential. <laughs> the gospel is essential. Amen. Yes. If they do put out some order, we'll follow the rules. And if I have to come in here by myself and preach from this pulpit to a phone or something, I'll do it. <laughs> Because we're going to use whatever means necessary to get yes. the gospel of Jesus Christ to Amen. men and women. Amen? Amen. In their homes, in their cars, on their jobs, wherever they might be. Yes. I believe we can take advantage of it and yes. God will get the glory. Amen. And God will touch hearts and God will encourage people and Amen. God will help people. No matter what Amen. happens. Amen. Yes. We need to keep the church going. Amen. Because the church was never a building anyway. The church is the body of Christ, the believers. Yes. And every single one of us as members in particular, we're the ones to let the light shine in a darkened yeah. world. We're the ones to allow Christ to work through us and in us to be a blessing to people around us. Yes. We need that door today. Yeah. We need to put our faith in that door and enter in. And enter in today to that door. Because it's that door today that will open when we step out in faith. And it's behind that door. And it's in that door today you'll find peace. Amen. It's in that door you'll find that the promises of God are real. They're yes and amen today. Amen. 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 It's behind that door. So many things are behind that door this morning. There's peace. There's salvation. If you're not saved, if you're not born again, if you're not part of the, the flock, you're not part of the family of God, and today there's a door and it's open and all you have to do is go to it in faith. So we don't know what's behind that door. Sometimes people are afraid. They're afraid to open doors because they don't know what's on the other side. <laughs> it's like the illustration Reverend gave the other night in preaching about the wall, about, was it the, uh, uh, the antelope or the African impala, uh, that they can jump so high and they can jump so far. You put them in a, in a containment area like a zoo, for example, and the wall's only like four or five feet high. They have the ability to jump over it, but because the wall is solid, but because they can't see what's on the other side, they're afraid to jump because they don't know what's there. Church, brothers and sisters, we know what's on the other side of Jesus. Amen. Jesus never fails. He never will dissatisfy. He is always there to meet the need. Amen. Have you surrendered? Have you submitted to him? And just know that when you go to Jesus, whatever is on the other side of that door, you know it's going to be good for you. Because there's no good thing that He will withhold from them that walk uprightly before Him. Yeah. And whatever is on the other side of that door, when we just surrender to the will of God, we know it's going to be alright. Amen? Amen? We don't have to understand it. We don't have to have it all in, in paper and all in writing and all projected out for the next five years. Like people, we, we want to know everything. We want to have it all down. We want to have it all figured out. But that's not faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things what? Not not planned seen. out, written down, and forecasted for the next ten years? No! The evidence of things not seen. You don't see it. But yet we believe God for it. Amen. 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 We don't see it. We don't feel it. All that, yeah. But faith <laughs> says it's going to be all right. Yes. Because I know God is working this for my good. Yes. Amen. Amen. There's a door today. Why don't we go to that door? His name is Jesus this morning. Yeah. As your heads are bowed and eyes are closed in reverence to Almighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you for your love and your mercy. We ask your blessing now as we turn the service over to you as we pray. As we put our faith and our trust in you, Almighty God, we ask you.